namo tassa bhagavato arahato o samma samputtassa namo tassa bhagavato arahato samma samputtassa namo tassa bhagavato arahato samma samputtassa utang dhammang sankhang Nutarang Upatyayang Namasami Well, I'm very happy to have this opportunity to visit you all here today at Jitta Viveka Meditation Center. So it's a meditation center, Dhamma Center, that is just beginning and it's always difficult but very rewarding to be involved at the beginning of a project. One of the pleasures in the future is that when everything is all um, established, the buildings are built and the new generation, they come and they take everything for granted and then you can sit back in your chair and say, when I came here, there was nothing. No building, no electricity, it was so difficult. But we all helped each other and we all worked hard and now we have this. So this is the joy, the pleasure of someone who's in right at the beginning. So to be involved in a project like this is um, great merit. It's not only of benefit uh, to you and your families um, right now, but will be a benefit to meditators from all over India in the future. So the merit just continues to grow throughout your life. But in the beginning, there are a lot of obstacles and have to be very patient. Being patient means that you don't get upset when things don't go the way that you want them to go. So many people think that a blessing means that you have no obstacles, that your road is very smooth. But the Buddha's blessing is different. The Buddha says, may you have a smooth journey over the bumpy road. So to have a smooth journey over the bumpy road, then the skill the skills that you learn in meditation are very important because as you um, practice the Buddha's teachings, you will see that there is a harmony between inside and outside. So the things that you learn in meditation, you can apply in your life and many things you learn in your life, you can apply in your meditation. So the, the project of establishing a meditation center here can seem like a really big project, but compared with the project of uh, eliminating the defilements in our hearts and finding liberation, it's a really very small project. Nevertheless, there are many similarities and um, the same principles apply with whatever kind of effort that we are making. Whether it is an external effort which can be measured and photographed or the internal um, development of which we cannot take any photographs or any videos or we cannot measure it but we can only know for ourselves. So to express one of these principles I'd like you to imagine a big lake and in the middle of the lake there is an island and someone is swimming towards the island in the middle of the lake so the foolish swimmer always has his or her eye on the island this is the goal and because their eyes are always on the island, they feel that very frustrated 
feel like making very slow progress. And because their head is lifted up above the water so that they can keep looking at the island, their swimming stroke is incorrect. And so they swim even more slowly than they would do otherwise. So the wise swimmer, he or she says, where is the island? And they notice where the island is, they observe, and then they start to swim. But they don't have to keep looking at the island all the time. Their, their interest, their focus is on making the good swimming stroke. So when they swim in this way and they, they, their focus is on the stroke, they, they swim quite fast um, and they can enjoy the swimming. And then every now and again, they just lift their head up just to check, make sure they are still swimming in the right direction. So this principle applies both for external work and internal work. So if on the external work we have a plan to build a big hall or to build some places for monks to stay or lay meditators to stay, that's a goal, long-term goal. But if a mind saying, oh, how can we get so much money? When will it be finished? How long will it take? mind is only on the result. And so um, the mind's so caught up with these money worries and time worries that um, their mind become very agitated um, and they lose the reason for the center in the first place. So these people are like a foolish swimmer. But for the uh, when we take on an external project, we, the wise person doesn't think that, oh, we are going to make some nice building and some good place that we can meditate in in the future. But we think, how can I practice the Dhamma every day, every step of the way, right from the very beginning? Um, how can we feel that we are growing in the Dhamma, even while we are still um, first beginning or slowly moving towards our goal. So the, our inner project is the same. If we hear these words like Nibbana or stream entry or Jhana, some people get very excited and all they can think about is these things. And so they become very frustrated um, when they don't realize these things. They're always thinking of the result of the meditation, not the actual quality of the meditation in the present moment. And some, or if they have some meditation experience, they get very excited. Oh, now I have this attainment and that attainment, and they feel very special. Um, and this is also a dead end for the um, Buddhist meditator. So these meditators are like the foolish swimmers. So the wise swimmer also has the goal of liberation or stream entry, but their main focus is on the present moment and um, practicing the Dhamma as best they can right now don't have to worry so much about the result, but um, put your focus on the quality of the present effort. So in the external project, our practice is one step at a time with mindfulness and kindness. And our internal project, our meditation project, the same. Now, one breath at a time with mindfulness and kindness. So the Buddha's teachings are comprised of the Dhamma and the Vinaya. And the Dhamma is timeless. But the Vinaya is not timeless. And the Vinaya says that monks have to finish their 
their lunch before 12 o'clock. And so for this reason, I would like to end my discourse at this point.